Brandon Lee and Brandon Lee, as, as Jamie mentioned, is supposed to be the guy who's like, you know, I'm, I'm actually, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of just American man. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like, uh, he, cause uh, Dolph's like making fun of him for not, you know, cause he's playing like a half Japanese man right. uh, who gets partnered with him and he goes I know more about your culture than you do and he was just like dude I was born in the valley my dad <laughs> is a white dentist I know what malls and MTV are like what the fuck why are you talking to me about like samurais and shit yeah. <laughs> he's like I, I, I just like Mar- I, I like to fight like that's kind of it oh man I just um, I love the idea of Dolph teaching Brandon Lee about Japanese culture it's just one of the funniest thoughts I've ever had in, in my head now <laughs> Well, yeah, and and I I will say that there's a very interesting relationship that this movie has with with Japanese culture, and that it's very clearly like lovingly appropriating it in the sense that like yeah. you know you know there this, there was a big wave of Asian action cinema that people got really into, especially in the '90s when you can tell that like almost every movie was aping John Woo in some ways. You know, even right. if they weren't doing it full out in you know the the dramatic scenes, they were definitely doing it in the action scenes. Like half of American action films that came out between like 90 and, and 98 yeah yeah basically look like you know like they were trying to do you know like scenes from hard-boiled and stuff and a lot of the, some of them were successful some of them were not successful i mean literally that's around the same time that also john woo got welcomed into making uh, american action films too because he helped popularize that style yeah so you know you know there was a you know there was a movement in american action that they you know they wanted to take on some of this eastern influence and this movie takes it on like literally in the narrative in ways that uh work and don't work in in part because yeah. i would i would go as far as to say that the depiction of the the uh you know the the yakuza in this movie is like really severe yeah like really I mean, severe i mean i yeah <laughs> and it's, it's not to say that the yakuza is like you know hasn't done some crazy shit <laughs> yeah or anything that's what like i mean that, so. but it's just like it, it's like you know the the very few Asian characters in this movie are doing like absolute psycho shit. Yeah, I, um, I do like wish it, like it, <laughs> that it had more scenes like with um like the one very Steven Seagal scene, honestly, where Dolph goes into the Chinese restaurant or or he's eating in the Chinese restaurant and then the the yakuza come in and they're like, you know, you're gonna work under us now and you have to give us money, but we'll protect you. And then Dolph comes up and starts like, you know, smashing up the place or whatever. But prior to that, you do have that lady saying like, you you know, like this is you have no right to do this, blah, blah, blah. Like I'm just uh, a Japanese Mm -hmm. woman trying to make money and all that kind of stuff. So I think they just needed a little bit more of that kind of representation. Yeah, definitely. But uh, but I will say, I mean, you know, uh, painting the Yakuza in a bad light isn't offensive because they're horrible so like you know i, I get what you're saying yeah. though that it's it's kind of yeah um, no well because i because I, I saw a lot of people talking about it and i i did kind of at a certain point get it because like the the way that you know even just the way that american criminals were treated in like the last movie that we were talking about you know like they were bad guys but this is like horror movie shit <laughs> Yeah, I know what you <laughs> like mean. Like they 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 went like really really uh I, I wouldn't say over the top because I I mean maybe I would partially. In in I some ways the, they went over the top in ways that are effective and in other ways I think they went over the top in ways that you know bordered on being a little bit stereotypical and regressive in in sure. in some ways. I, I will say um, I think the like the the emphasis on the uh implied sexual assault is kind of just unnecessary. Um but but I, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to lie. And then, I don't and then, mind and then the when girl like, wanting to commit seppuku over it and stuff. Well, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that goes a little, <laughs> that goes a little far for sure. Um, but I do st- like the stuff where like the, uh, the, the one, uh, girl that is in the club and kind of the the crack addict or whatever gets her head cut off with a katana <laughs> shit like that. Like, I don't, yeah, I don't it's, mind it's, that it's, stuff, it's, but it, I get why, you know, uh, at a certain point it might be a little much i just don't find it like it was hard to, for me to find it offensive because they're doing it about a pretty well-known horrific crime organization that has done horrible things and mm-hmm. probably 
equal to what we've seen in this movie at a certain point in yeah, their history. Yeah, so. I just I I think on I think on some level there is gonna there is like a, a little bit of a fair gripe in the sense that like Shh. Dolph is the respectful Japanese man <laughs> who understands the culture. Get, and yeah. all the actual Japanese characters are like <laughs> horror horror movie freaks. Right. Like um, Dolph is the one that's re- like the, the most positive <laughs> representation of Japanese culture in this movie and it's Dolph yes. Lunker. And so I do I yeah. I do get what you're saying there for sure. But I, but I will say <laughs> that because of that there's a lot of really insane shit that happens in this movie that make it a fun curiosity to absolutely to watch. like absolutely because there's you know like even you know like Dolph once again he's he's this cop but he knows the way of the samurai and he eats at like the local sushi bar and I'm glad you brought up Seagal because I thought <laughs> at one point this had to have been a screenplay that they pitched to Seagal at oh, some point because it was also yeah. Warner and this movie was uh, re-edited by the in-house Warner editor, the guy who re-edited Out for Justice. Oh my for god, Seville. dude! You even have that montage uh, near the end where he's doing the like training, and he puts on the Japanese headband, and it's very yes. much like Hard to Kill. It's, Hard to Kill. Like, that's exactly it's, what I thought. It's of. fucking crazy. So yeah, dude, I I think that you you might be correct, and that this might have been a Seagal joint first, and then uh, it got to got to Dolph. <laughs> yeah, because because he go he goes Seagal mode on that small business. <laughs> oh, he does. Yeah, <laughs> smashes and, uh, that and, shit and, up. And, and, and they're basically yelling like, "Hey, man, this isn't Tokyo. This is America." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you, you can't you can't come in here and start attacking a you know this this lady's business. Meanwhile, he's like throwing people into her cups and like throwing them through the windows. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what Seagal does in every single one of his movies. Yeah. <laughs> It was the most Seagal scene. I loved it. And then this is also the introduction to Brandon Lee, where they have this kind of misunderstanding.